हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग बायोलॉजी क्लास इलेवेंथ चैप्टर नंबर थ्री किंगडम प्लांटिंग दिस चैप्टर वी हैव स्टार्टेड इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर दैट इज किंगडम प्लांटिंग टुडे इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इज किंगडम प्लांटिंग किंगडम प्लांटे इज डिवाइडेड इंटू टू कैटेगरीज दैट इज क्रिप्टोगैम्स एंड फेनेरोगैम्स इन दैट क्रिप्टोगैम्स आर डिवाइडेड इंटू थैलोफाइट्स ब्रायोफाइट्स एंड टेरिडोफाइट्स एंड फेनेरोगैम्स इज डिवाइडेड इंटू जिम्नोस्पोम्स एंड एंजियोस्पोम्स इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट दी थैलोफाइटा कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स साइलेंट फीचर्स ऑफ द डिविजन थैलोफाइटा today we will study about bryophyta we will study the characteristics silent features of the division bryophyta next lecture we will study pteridophytes then we will go with gymnosperms and angiosperms is deleted from your topic for this academic year since your portion has been reduced so in that reduced syllabus the topic angiosperms have been deleted so we have to study about till gymnosperms only okay we have to study about thallophytes bryophytes pteridophytes and gymnosperms okay so last lecture we covered about thallophytes today we will start with bryophytes let us start bryophyta bryophytes are mostly terrestrial plant that means they live on land terrestrial plants means bryophytes are found on land okay they are found in moist shady places bryophytes are found in moist places means wherever moisture is present shady places okay moisture shade is there at that place bryophytes are present they need water for fertilization and completion of their life cycle since we have told that bryophytes are terrestrial plant that means they live on land but for fertilization process they need water for completion of their life cycle they need water hence they are called amphibious plants okay as you all know amphibious means amphibious animals means the animals that live on land as well as water they are called as amphibians similarly the plants that are terrestrial that means that they live on land but when they require water for fertilization so both the things are required they are living on land but for fertilization they require water so such plants are known as amphibious plants okay such plants are known as amphibious plants life cycle of bryophytes shows sporophytic and gametophytic stages sporophytic stage means when they produce spores gametophytic stage means when they produce gametes that is male gamete and female gamete so the life cycle of bryophyte shows alternatively both the stages one time sporophytic generation and next time gametophytic generation alternatively so they are having both the stages they show both the stages bryophytes have root like structures make a note of it students bryophytes do not have roots they have root like structure something that is looking like roots and that that is known as rhizoids okay since they are root like structures we tell them rhizoids okay rhizoids are unicellular in liverwort and multicellular in mosses rhizoids means root like structures are unicellular means single cell in liverwort and multicellular means more than one cell in mosses okay liverwort and mosses are the two types of bryophytes two different types of bryophytes so liverwort have unicellular roots and mosses have multicellular roots rhizoids absorb water and minerals and also help in fixation of thallus on the substratum 
Okay, rhizoids are absorbing water and minerals. Roots, same way like roots, they, rhizoids are doing the function of roots. When, when we study the function of roots, the most important function of root is to absorb water and minerals. Similarly, rhizoids are also doing the same function that is absorption of water and minerals and also help in fixation of plants that is thallus on the substratum. Same function as that of the roots. Roots are also helping in the fixation process of plants. Okay, so rhizoids also help in absorption of water and minerals and also helps in fixation of thallus on the substratum. Okay. Bryophytes are divided into two groups that is leverworts and mosses. So I hope all these silent features of bryophytes are clear to you all. I repeat, bryophytes are terrestrial plant that means they live on the land. But for fertilization or completion of their life cycle, they need water. So they are called as amphibious plants. Okay, the life cycle of bryophytes shows sporophytic as well as gametophytic generation. Bryophytes have root-like structures and they are known as rhizoids. These rhizoids are unicellular in liverwort and multicellular in mosses. Rhizoids absorb water and minerals and also help in fixation of thallus on the substratum. Bryophytes are divided into two groups that is liverwort and mosses. We will study now the classification of bryophytes. Bryophytes are divided into three classes that is liverwort, hornwort and third one is mosses. Liverwort, the other name for liverwort is hepatacea. For hornwort is anthocerote and mosses is musae. Okay, liverwort is also known as hepatacea. Hornwort is also known as anthocerote and mosses is also known as musae. So, bryophytes are divided into three classes. Let us study one by one. First one, liverwort. It is known as hepatacea. Liverworts are lower members of bryophytes. They are known as lower members of bryophytes. Okay. They are the first, we can say first members of bryophytes, lower members, which are not well developed. Lower members means they are not well developed. They don't have well developed organs of plants, of bryophytes. Gametophyte possesses flat body called thallus. Okay, you can see here the gametophytic structure. It consists of a flat body and this flat body is known as thallus. Thallus is green. You can observe green, dorsi ventral, postrate with unicellular rhizoids. Okay, the, it is green. Dorsi ventral means flat. Postrate means flat. It is Okay, with unicellular rhizoids means single cell rhizoids, single cell root like structures example for liverwort is rickshia you can see here example rickshia marchensia okay flat green colored structure and this flat body is known as thallus thallus is green dorsi ventral okay green dorsi ventral then postrate unicellular and they show unicellular rhizoids. Next is hornworts. Hornworts are the other name for hornworts is anthocerote. When I say anthocerote, they possess flattened thallus. That means they process flat thallus. Okay, flat structure. The thallus produces horny structures. Horny structures means horn like structure you all know horns okay so horn like structures you can see here you can observe here in this diagram horn like structures okay horn sharp horns are there okay so horn like structures which are called sporophytes 
Hence the name is also given horn words. Okay, horn words means their structure, thallus structure is like horns. So they are given the name horn words. Okay, example for this is anthoceros. Example for horn words is anthoceros and hence the other name that is anthocerote is given to this kind of plants, this kind of bryophytes. Next is mosses. Other name for mosses is musi. Okay. These are advanced member of bryophytes. As we have studied lower member of bryophytes, then the, the last mosses are known as higher member of bryophytes, advanced members of bryophytes, which possesses erect plant body. You can see here erect, matlab, straight plant body. Okay, erect means straight plant body. Gametophytic phase of life cycle includes two stages. This type of mosses produce two types of stages, namely protonema stage and leafy stage. This two, there are two stages in mosses, protonema stage and leafy stage. Protonema stage and leafy stage. Okay. Protonema is postrate, green, branched and filamentous. You can see here, postrate means flat, branched, green and filamentous means thread-like structures. Okay, protonema stage, this is the protonema stage which is flat, green, postrate and <coughs> filamentous. At its juvenile stage, juvenile gametophyte means young stage and it bears many buds on it. Okay, next is leafy stage. Leafy stage produced from each bud, protonema, helps in the vegetative propagation. This is the leafy stage and this leafy stage helps in vegetative propagation. That means vegetative reproduction. Okay, the leafy stage has erect, slender, stem-like colloid means axis bearing spiral leaf like structures phyloid. Okay. Stem like colloid and leaf like phyloids. You can see this is the leafy stage. This is having this stem like structure and leaf like structure and root like structure. Root like structures are known as rhizoids. Stem like structures are known as <coughs> colloid and leaf like structures are known as phyloid. So all these three structures, leaf-like structure, stem-like structure and root-like structure are doing the functions of root, stem and leaf respectively. Okay. They perform the same function as that of root, stem and leaf. But we cannot say them root, stem and leaf since they are not that much developed kingdom. Okay. It is fixed in the soil by rhizoids. The stem and leaf can see your stem and leaf is fixed in the soil with the help of rhizoids since they are doing the work of roots. So they do the work of fixation. They fix the plants okay by in the soil by rhizoids. Okay. So mosses are advanced stage of bryophytes and they possess erect plant body. Gametophytic phase and sporophytic phase again they show in gametophytic stage they include Protonema and leafy stage. Further divided into protonema and leafy stage. Protonema is postrate, flat, branched, okay, filamentous. And it bears many buds. And leafy stage produced from each bud, protonema helps in vegetative propagation. The leafy stage has erect, slender stem like colloid and leaf like phyloid. And the it is fixed in soil with the help of rhizoids, that is root-like structure. Okay. Next, we will move to the economic importance of bryophytes. Bryophytes means some of the mosses provide food for herbivorous mammals, birds, etc. So, all those plants which are herbivorous, okay, so mosses are providing the food for them, herbivorous mammals, birds, etc. This. Bryophytes provide peat that are used as fuel. Mosses are also used as packaging material for transport of living materials. 
because they have significant water holding capacity many times this mosses are used for packaging the material which are used for transportation okay transport of living material because they have the capacity to hold much amount of water in it they decompose rocks to form soil this is also one of the important property of bryophytes they decompose rocks to form soil dense layers of mosses help in prevention of soil erosion thus act as soil binders there are many dense layers of mosses bryophytes which help in the prevention of soil erosion and thus they act as a soil binders they keep the soil binded bryophytes helps in maintaining the binding of the soil okay so they are known as soil erosion okay thus they are act as a soil binders okay so students we have studied the two kingdoms totally two divisions that is bryophyte thallophyte we have studied already in the last lecture today we have studied about the bryophytes okay so we will stop here for today thank you we will continue the same chapter in our next lecture with the remaining divisions okay bryophyte thallophyte is done bryophyte is done now pteridophytes gymnosperms is remaining and angiosperm is deleted so thank you for today we will continue in our next class